Welcome to the hearing officer meeting for October 3rd, Tuesday, 2017. Today's meeting is called to order. Good afternoon. My name is David Williams. I'm the City of Tempe's hearing officer. The City of Tempe hearing officer has authorized by Arizona revised statute in the City of Tempe Zoning and Development Code and has the duty to carry out the provisions and intent of the city's adopted general plan and zoning and development code. The hearing officer is granted the authority to conduct public hearings to review and either approve, continue, deny, or approve with conditions several types of cases, including use permits, variances, and property abatements. On today's agenda, we do have three types of items that will be heard, including a set of meeting minutes from our last meeting in September, uh, one abatement, property abatement request, one use permit request, and one variance request. As the hearing officer, I have reviewed the City of Tempe Community Development Department report on each of the items that's on the agenda today. Uh, I have considered the information in there, and I used that information during today's deliberations. I have additionally driven by each of the properties and walk those properties uh, that are on the agenda today to understand the site conditions that are there, the immediate neighborhood, uh, and the character that's there. If you are an applicant or interested citizen, when your request is called or when you wish to address the hearing officer, uh, please step up to the microphone at the front of the room and state your name and city of residence. Any person other than the applicant that wishes to speak today, please complete a white speaker card, which looks like this, and you can find them up front next to the podium and in the back of the room. Complete that speaker card and hand it over to staff when you come on up front to speak, if you would. Uh, each person's given about three minutes to speak. Any person who is aggrieved by a decision of the hearing officer may file an appeal, and that needs to be done within 14 calendar days after the hearing officer has made a decision. So the deadline, if you're interested in filing an appeal from any decisions made today, is 3 p.m. October 17, 2017. That's 3 p.m. October 27, uh, 2017. Appeals of the decisions of the hearing officer are either heard by the Board of Adjustment or the Development Review Commission, which other board is appropriate to that type of case. In the case of a property abatement, if the property owner fails to file an appeal or fails to bring the property into compliance prior to that appeal deadline, the code violations addressed at the hearing today will be abated by the City of Tempe. Um, I got a couple introductions over to my right, City Staff, Steve Abrahamson, Principal Planner, Diane McGuire, Administrative Assistant, Lee Jimenez, uh, Senior Planner, and Karen Stobel, Senior Planner. Just a heads up for everyone in the audience today, we're going to take the agenda slightly out of order. We're going to take agenda item number three as the second item. So agenda item two will be the third item for today. Okay, let's get after it. The first item on today's agenda is the minutes item number one from our meeting of September 19th, 2017. I have reviewed those minutes and communicated with staff and reviewed what's in our packet and they are approved as presented. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to jump to agenda item. I said that backwards. We're going to take agenda item four before we take agenda item three. Agenda item two is the minutes. We'll now hear agenda item four. This is a request to, okay. I got ahead of my statement. Okay. Uh, agenda item two, request to approve public uh, nuisance abate, abatement items at the Powell property, CE 167310, located at 2108 East Lemon Street. The applicant is the city of Tempe. Before you start, though, we're going to switch agenda items three and four. We'll hear agenda item four next after agenda item two. I apologize for my confusion. Uh, staff, go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Hector Heredia. I'm a code inspector for Community Development Code Enforcement, and I am here seeking a 180-day open abatement period for 2108 East Lemon Street, Tempe, Arizona, 85281, the Paul property. Um, this was a property that was brought to our attention anonymously about a year ago, uh, since then received several complaints about uh, the neglect to rectify the pending violations at the property. Although there was some contact, 
um, due to some of the extreme conditions at the property. Um, City of Tempe and other outside agencies exhausted their options for the Powell property and therefore prompting the abatement, uh, seeking the abatement approval. Um, that's why I'm here. Uh, I have some current pictures from this morning if you'd like to see them, but I can assure you that no corrective actions have been taken uh, to clearly eliminate this case from our uh, division. Thank you, Mr. Heredia. Um, I noticed in the materials that there had been some progress earlier this calendar year, and then that progress actually wasn't maintained. It may have backslid to overgrown conditions. Uh, can you describe your contact with this property owner or the um, representative I'm, in the last 60 days or so? The son uh, assumed responsibility uh, after proving that his parents were uh, financially strapped and also suffered from severe medical issues, which in turn delayed uh, the, the closure of this case due to their conditions. Uh, the son definitely was overwhelmed and stopped communicating with us after we exhausted all of our options. Um, he ha since then has stopped communicating with us. He does not respond to any of our messages and uh, the other agencies are also trying to pursue uh, some appeals to help the family but at this point have exhausted what we can allow for the property to be cleared. And I am here just seeking for approval to uh, address the concerns. Thank you for that additional information. And thank you for your report. Is the property owner here today or representative for the Paul property? Agenda item number two. Not seeing anyone. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number two? Okay. I did drive by the property today and did uh, recognize the conditions ongoing. Uh, and then share the concern about lack of communication to even have an intent to correct it. Uh, as such, uh, the request by the city staff to approve a 180-day open abatement is approved as requested. Thank you very much for your report. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Okay, we are now going to hear agenda item number four, which is a request approval for a use permit to allow an amusement business axe throwing. For Lumberjacks' axe throwing, this is case PL170285. It's located at 3109 South Fair Lane. The applicant is Angelo DiNardo, uh, J LB Jax Tempe LLC. Uh, Mr. Jimenez. Good evening here, Officer Williams. My name is Lee Jimenez. I'm a senior planner with the Community Development Department in the Planning Division. Lumberjacks' axe, axe throwing is proposing to operate an axe throwing amusement business in a uh, 6,278 square foot suite of a 12,600 square foot industrial building located on lot 108 of Eaton Free, uh, Freeway Industrial Park Subdivision, which is situated on the southeast corner of South Fair Lane and West Geneva Drive in the GID General Industrial District. The applicant, Angelo uh, DiNardo, indicates that the establishment will have um, six foot wide throwing lanes divided by metal fencing with uh, oriented strand board uh, and each lane will hold up to five persons. The establishment will operate Monday through Sunday from 12 to 5 p.m. by appointment only and by walk-in and appointment Monday through Sunday from um, 5 to 10 p.m. To date, the staff has received one inquiry about the use permit request um, but no opposition was noted. And as indicated in the staff report, staff believes that this application meets the approval criteria for the use permit and supports this request subject to the conditions provided in the staff report. And I'll be available should you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Um, I did have a one or two questions for you. We touched on this in the study session. Um, so there is no liquor permit or alcohol permit associated with this address or this use that we're aware of at this time? That's correct, Hearing Officer Williams. Okay. And there's no other um, firearms, weapons types of things going on that we're aware of either. This is about axe throwing. That's correct. Only. Nothing else as, is noted. As you understand it. Okay. I noticed uh, you did an analysis of parking, had some concerns about potential shortage of parking. 
um, and have included a condition, and I appreciate that. Um, I think that's it for the moment. I may need to call you back up. Is the applicant here or the representative today? Come on up. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, my name is Angelo DiNardo of uh, LB Jacks Tempe LLC. Um, my current uh, city that I reside in is the city of Las Vegas. Um, our intent is to uh, apply uh, for a use permit here because um, the zoning is currently uh, general industrial. We wanted to actually apply for an amusement permit uh, for this facility uh, to do axe throwing. Uh, I reviewed the conditions of approval. Um, I am okay with the conditions of approval. You know, I think it's going to end up being a work in progress. Uh, you know, we go through the building permitting and things like that. Um, as I'm not necessarily familiar, and that's something that the contractor can can uh, help us out with a little bit more. Um, I'm willing to answer any questions because I know this is kind of a very new concept, but uh, we believe uh, that this will not be a new concept. We believe that this is something that will have uh, a certain culture around it, um, and uh, it ties right in with experiential entertainment. Uh, as Mr. Jimenez said, uh, I mentioned uh, escape rooms uh, as, a, as a comparison to this. You know, uh, my partner uh, who currently uh, runs the facility out of Pittsburgh uh, at Lumberjacks is in Pittsburgh. Uh, he was one of the first 10 people to ever do uh, escape rooms here in the United States, which coincidentally uh, that craze started in Canada too. So we seem to think that they're onto something there in the Toronto area as far to, as, far as creating trends. So. Um, you know, we're on, we're on to this one. We think it's a, a good experiential entertainment. Uh, we plan on doing everything we can uh, to keep it safe. Obviously, you know, the general liability insurance we'll have and workman's comp insurance we'll have and uh, any other regulations and things that, that we actually have to meet. Thank you very much. Um, I've been doing zoning cases and hearings and things for almost 35 years. This is my first axe throwing case <laughs> for proposed use. So not coming from a lot of background, a very interesting, I did do some research on it and see that it's in many cities now in the US seems to have kind of uh, descended from the north where people use axes maybe more often for firewood and things. Um, we did have a case not long ago too with some other smashing and crashing and destruction rooms. Maybe that was the, what we're referring to. In any case, um, I understand that you are familiar with the conditions of approval and don't have any objections to those. Thank you for your presentation today. That's all I've got for you at the moment. I may need to call you back if I have questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you again. Anyone in the audience who'd like to speak? This is a public hearing on agenda item number four, a use permit to allow um, axe throwing amusement lumberjacks. Anyone? Okay, uh, while this is different, new, doesn't make it bad, I hope, wish you success in terms of inventing it a little bit or developing as it goes or work in progress, as you say. I appreciate that staff's paying attention to the neighbors and the parking condition. Um, this is a use permit request. Um, so there are some criteria to be addressed. So um, your request for use permit uh, for lumberjacks axe throwing is approved subject to the six conditions in the staff report and finding that the use criteria for use permit is met including number one significant increase in vehicular or pedestrian traffic uh, we don't see that we have a condition to address parking issues in case we have excessive parking traffic um, and I believe there's adequate parking at the site as observed today and presented by staff uh, number two, a nuisance arising from the emission of odor, dust, gas, noise, vibration, smoke, heat, or glare at a level exceeding that of ambient conditions. Uh, I don't expect any exterior um, externalities, if you will, from the use of this business, again, other than we manage and handle the parking appropriate so it does not become a nuisance. Uh, contribution to the deterioration of the neighborhood or downgrading of property values, which would be in conflict with our adopted uh, policies and uh, objectives for rehabilitation redevelopment. Uh, I see this as an investment in a vacant space and I think that's a positive when it comes to contributing to our community and find this criteria met. Compatibility with existing surrounding structures and uses. Uh, certainly this is different uh, but it's an interior use and there's no reason to expect it will not be compatible from the information available today. And finally number five adequate control of disruptive behavior 
both inside and outside the premises, which may create a nuisance to surrounding area and the general public. You know, as long as one teammate doesn't upset another teammate too much, we should be okay. So, <laughs> no, um, I don't expect any disruptive behavior. Again, uh, I believe Tempe PD will weigh in uh, with a, um, a safety plan or uh, will review this, a security plan, it's called, in case one is needed. Uh, which is pretty standard for most of our uses. Uh, so find that criteria number five um, is met as well. So again, this request for use permit is approved, subject to the six conditions. Thank you for being here today, and thank good luck with your business. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back to agenda item three. Uh, this is a request for approval of a variance to reduce the required landscape buffer width from the street sidewalk, this is along Baseline Road, for a maneuvering drive lane. The, reduce, the, the request is to reduce it from 20 feet to 11 feet 8 inches. This is for quick quack car wash, uh, case PL170240, located at 5201 South McClintock Drive. The applicant is Identity Mutual LLC. Uh, Ms. Stobel. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Karen Stovall, Senior Planner. Um, this variance request is for the property at 5201 South McClintock Drive. The property is zoned PCC1. The site is located at the um, southeast corner of McClintock and Baseline. It is surrounded to the southeast and north across Baseline by commercial shopping centers and to the west across McClintock by an auto dealership. The applicant is proposing... <coughs> The applicant uh, is proposing to demolish the existing gas station and build a new automatic car wash building and self-serve vacuum canopies on the site. With this proposal, the applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the required landscape buffer from the sidewalk along Baseline Road for a maneuvering drive lane to enter the car wash tunnel from 20 feet to 11 feet 8 inches. The applicant held a neighborhood meeting in August of 2017 and three individuals attended. A summary of that meeting is provided in the report and um, also in the attachments um, which contains the applicant's meeting summary. Staff received two letters of opposition. One was included as an attachment and the second was received earlier today and provided to you at the study session. Uh, based on th the information submitted by the applicant and review of the variance criteria, we are recommending approval subject to the two stipulations in the staff report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. I have a couple questions for you. Um, I noticed in the uh, kind of the rundown and summary of the use number of parking spaces, so they're going to be needing to seek uh, an application with the Development Review Commission for additional parking spaces, and that's separate from the variance request Correct. and separate from the hearing. It's not something I can address today, is it? Correct. Okay. Correct. The use permit um, request will be heard by the Development Review Commission um, along with the Development Plan Review request for the design of the site. Okay. And I saw in um, the attorney's letter from the neighboring property owner a dimension that was different than what's on the agenda today. So I am to understand that the original, re this original request may have been modified at some point? Yes. From the 7 so, feet, whatever, to the 11 feet? Correct, yes. Um, since the initial submittal, the applicant has modified the site plan, and now the variance being requested is 11 feet 8 inches. Okay. And um, also, I noticed that, you know, large, largely staff's um, analysis of this kind of hinges on uh, dedication and the word dedication is significant um, along baseline road and this is not a con is this a condemnation where they're being compensated for this square footage or this is a um, it, gift it, to the city it is a uh, right-of-way dedication that is occurring concurrent with development of the site is that a normal condition that if you guys are looking for additional dedications they come with Site plan approval? Yes. It is? Yes. Okay. Very good. I think that's all the questions I've got for you, Ms. Stovall. Thank you for your report. Thank you. Okay. Is the owner here or the applicant's representative? Come on up. Hello. And I've got a PowerPoint, but we have no clicker, so we're going to kind of... Yeah. 
Oh, we have a clicker. We found it. Great. Yes. Thank you. Karen, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Lindsay Shuby. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Gamage and Burnham to North Central in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here on behalf of Quick Quack car washes. And I've got Joe Walters and Michael Clark. Uh, so if we have any questions that I am not equipped to answer, uh, we've got a, a full team of people. So hopefully we can answer anything you have. Ms. Stovall did a great presentation of explaining generally where we are, the southeast corner of Baseline and McClintock. Um, the property owners are also here with us tonight, Jamie and Dale Burke. They are longtime Tempe residents and also have owned or had an ownership interest in the property for almost 27 years. So they owned and operated uh, the, the gas station and convenience store um, prior to, to entering into this uh, relationship with, with Quick Quack. And I, it's not totally relevant, but in terms of interest sake, they, they will still be the owners of the property. So they are Tempe residents um, who have a, a vested interest in, in the city, and they'll still have an ownership interest in the property. Not relevant for the case, but just interesting. Uh, as we all know, today's hearing is simply to discuss the variance request. And, and not the use. And, and looking in some of the letters of opposition, some use is a question, but um, I'm going to keep, keep my presentation to the variance. Again, Ms. Doble hit this, but the property is zoned PCC1. Um, this allows for the use of the car wash with a use permit. And again, this is not in your purview to approve the use permit, as it is in other jurisdictions. Um, but we do need the variance request to be heard and approved by you before we go to, to the use permit. So what is the variance request? Again, you guys touched on it. It started differently than, than how it ended. We amended our application. So the variance is to reduce the, the, the required landscape buffer um, from 20 feet to 11 feet 8 inches. And um, the justification for this request is the city has requested a 10-foot right-of-way dedication to place a bus bay, bay on Baseline Road. And in order to accommodate the loss of that property, um, we are requesting the landscape, a variance in the landscape setback in order to accommodate. The site plan, I know I see in the study session you had a larger, <laughs> a larger version. This is kind of hard to see, but again, uh, there are two frontages on this property. And to be clear, the variance request is just being requested on baseline. It, is, it, it does not carry over to McClintock where we have that frontage. So in order for you to review this request, there are four approval criteria. The first are special circumstances. Um, what are the special circumstances for this request that's in front of you today? One, city transportation improvement. You know, the upgrade, the massive upgrade to the Tempe transit system um, includes this bus bay on, on baseline, which we're happy to be a part of, um, but that necessitated the, the request for the variance. Um, this is a small, privately owned site that, that has another property owner around it. Um, and in order to get full use of this property, uh, we do need that reduction, again, because of the bus bay dedication. Uh, and then third, I touched on on the last slide, but we've got two frontages. And so I, I clarified that in the, in, on the last slide to, to make sure you understood that the variance isn't being requested for both frontages, only one. But I do think the fact we have two frontages and, and two uh, frontage landscape buffers, that that is a special circumstance to this property. Uh, second, uh, deprivation of privileges. Uh, again, the strict application of the code, you know, we have to make sure that you won't deprive the property owner of privileges enjoyed by other property owners with the same classification or zoning. Uh, this situation, the, the landscape buffer is imposed on everyone, but the request of the 10-foot bus bay is not. So that is a, a unique circumstance to us. Um, plus, as discussed in the narrative and the staff report, there are other non-conforming uses in the area. Um, therefore, you're going to not allowing us to have a special circumstance over others. Uh, the adjustment authorized will not constitute a grant of special privileges. That's a third test. Uh, again, this site would be, develop would be developed with the two landscape buffers as required by the code without the bus lane that's being requested. Um, other property owners, if, for example, if the northwest corner was a, again to redevelop, uh, they, they would not have the bus bay necessarily in front of them and therefore um, wouldn't need this variance request. Uh, last, not self-imposed, again, this is a request by the City of Tempe for the bus bay. In closing, 
we come forward today with a recommendation of approval from your staff. Um, the current use on the property, and you said you were out there looking at it, has, has little to no landscape buffer. Uh, the landscape requirement for the zone is 15%, and we're proposing 26% landscape coverage with our new application, um, even with the reduction of the landscape buffer along, uh, along baseline. Uh, not self-imposed condition, and again, as you mentioned in the study session, and again right here, that this is a voluntary dedication. Uh, we, therefore, the variance is necessary. So if you have any questions or comments, happy to answer them. Thank you very much. So, um, is it Ms. Shuby? Yes. You represent Quick Quack and the property owners, or just the property owner, or just the Quick the car wash folks? We represent Quick Quack, uh, but we are Gamage and Burnham is long term friends of the property owner. So, my client and is Quick Quack. This is a lease arrangement then for the use of the property? Correct. Can you disclose the term of the lease? I'm a land use lawyer. You know, <laughs> land use lawyers don't know questions like that. No, so, no, I can't disclose it. I don't even know it, but uh, no. Um, maybe your clients would, I mean, maybe, how yes. many years we're uh, uh, talking about here. Okay. Um, Let me ask my client. And see. Okay, thanks. I apologize. Okay. Again, land use lawyers don't know the answers to these questions. 20 years, it's a 20 year lease term with five five year options. Thank you for getting that information. Absolutely. Well, just a couple more comments. I know you mentioned lot, corner lot makes it unique. Well, they're not that unique, right? There's a lot of corner lots out there, three of them within spitting distance almost. Um, but also, too, in terms of other non compliant properties or other things in the neighborhood. I hope you understand a variance needs to stand on its own merits as opposed to what you know what else may have happened and how appropriate or inappropriate those might be. So I'll be looking at it in that those terms uh, today. And I may need to call you back for questions and thank you for your presentation. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's time to hear from the public. I have a number of white cards. If your name is not called and you want to speak, get a speaker card and fill it out. And I think I'm doing them in the order I got them and a they're not, I apologize. Um, but our first speaker um, is Jordan. I hope first name's okay. Jordan Ray. Sorry. My handwriting is completely illegible. <laughs> Find them. Or there's multiple Jordans. Thank Welcome, you. Ms. Rose. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much. Hearing Officer Williams and staff, and um, thank you to Karen while we disagree with your approach. We appreciate the time that you spent on the, on the um, issue. I'm Jordan Rose with Rose Law Group, and with me today is um, our law clerk from ASU, Omar Abdullah, who's been working on this with me. Um, I represent Michael Pollack. He owns the Peter Piper Shopping Center and a bunch of other uh, commercial centers in Tempe. He would be here tonight, but there's this ICSC conference of for shopping center developers, it's very important that, that he's there uh, tonight. So uh, he apologizes and wanted me to send those apologies. Um, I would start by just saying that those um, deviations that um, the attorney for Quick Quack mentioned, those were built before your code in, went into effect in 2010 that required this landscape setback in order to up the character and quality of development in Tempe. Um, I would also mention that dedicating 10 foot of right of way is a very normal thing that you do in most developments on a, a, a typical you know, roadway like this. Um, in any case, let me just want to go through briefly these, these tests. So here's the property, and you can see Peter Piper um, surrounding it. Um, when we looked at these four tests, we, we could not find a special circumstance to this property. It's not an undersized lot. In fact, I just show here there's four um, car washes within the near vicinity that are some much smaller than the 33,000 square foot lot that we have here, um, and, and they were able to, to, to maneuver. Um, even with the 10 foot bus bay dedication, that lot still is larger than most of the other car washes. In fact, it's larger than all of the other car washes that are listed here. It's 1,206 square feet that they lose. Further, we looked in, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but Quick Quack was proposing 
Um, they had some neighborhood opposition in Phoenix to a quick quack at Thomas and 7th Street. They withdrew about three months ago that request. But that site was very similar to this site, but it was only, it was like 10,000 square feet less, or, or maybe it was 8,000 square feet less, but it was 25,000 square feet. So I know that that company, it seems that that operator could make a smaller configuration work. Um, this lot is not special circumstances. It's totally flat. It's as flat as it could be. Um, it's a regular shape. There's nothing irregular about that, even with the bus bay dedication. Um, it's not burdened by any surroundings whatsoever. In fact, the, the property owner surrounding it is, is totally opposed to this, this um, special, special uh, 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 variance. Um, and there's this relatively simple lot to, to develop. Um, it's just there's no need for a variance in this particular case. The, the, the second test is, you know, will it deprive this property owner of other similarly situated property owners that, that they, you know, that they get to enjoy? And this property itself has developed without variances. Um, Michael Pollack, our property owner, has developed all of his lots without variances. Um, the three lots in the general area, only one received a variance, um, and that was where there was no neighborhood opposition. Um, as um, the attorney for the, um, the Quick Quack uh, explained, there, there are a couple of lots that have landscape di um, differences, but that's because they were put in place, they were built before that. So the bank developed without a variance. Here you can see this, um, the TACO uh, has a, a setback. And then I wanted to look at um, a grant of special, pro uh, of, this would be a, a grant of a special privilege to this property owner. Um, other car washes in Tempe, similar size, didn't have a variance. Um, they didn't ask for one. And as I said, Quick Quack even had a, a, a case that was much smaller. Um, so the, this special privilege to do this right at a very important intersection for the city, our, our landowner who um, really cares about what that center looks like, um, just the reason that you, you have a, a landscape setback in place in 2010, you adopted that, and why would you decide in this case that we should break that recent rule? It'll only enhance the, the neighborhood. Um, the variance can only be granted if it's not a self-imposed um, thing by the property owner. And in this case, we know they can develop without the variance. Um, the, vari the requirement is to maintain the quality of development in Tempe. It's important for this corner and the quality of the corner. It's developed, the property itself has developed without a re reduction before. The site's highly developable. I mean, this request is just entirely self-imposed. And if they need less landscaping in the, at the setback, they can choose a more appropriate site, I think, in Tempe. Um, the most directly affected neighbor opposes the request. The most directly affected neighbor believes this will diminish property values. And the request to reduce this will only negatively affect the, the whole city. Um, so the, fi the site functions without the necessary variance. And I just wanted to show you, like, this is their request in, temp in Phoenix. Ms. Rose, I need you to wrap up your comments. Uh, yes, okay, okay, thank you. Um, in any case, they reduced their vacuum stalls in Phoenix, and it fit perfectly on that lot. Um, so it, this case, I, I just, we couldn't find a test that it met, and so we would ask that you um, consider that, and thank you for listening to us tonight. You're very welcome. I thank appreciate you. the time and effort that you, your client, has gone to to thank represent you. your, your um, I do have a question for you, to represent your concerns and property rights. Um, in terms of any perspective on damage or harm this type of variance would cause to your client, Yes, um, Hearing Officer Williams, he, he sent me here tonight, and we've obviously done extensive amount of work because he thinks it will harm the property. I mean, he puts lots of money into his properties to keep them up, to make them exceed, you know, standards and quality. And he, frankly, he very much likes that Tempe has this standard for landscape setback. He's not violating that. He believes that this property at the gateway to his shopping center and the gateway to Tempe in, in many respects there's just no reason for it. There's no reason for a reduction in the beauty and the quality of the Tempe development. Thank you very much. You Thank don't. you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, next is Judy. Judy Morris. And then after Judy will be Sylvia. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Judy Morris, Tempe, Arizona, 85283, neighbor on Harvard. 
always appreciated that space where it was. I'm so sorry that the gas station had to leave, for starters. Uh, my big concern is the noise level. Uh, I respect the businesses that are there already, the coffee shop, which is expanding, and, and a couple other places. I just, as a business owner there, I would be opposed to have to listen to that noise and, and everything that goes with the car wash. But as a neighborhood resident, I oppose it doubly because I, we have enough noise the way it is in that area. And that's my main concern. Uh, outside of, I really would prefer not to have a car wash at that existing area, much less with the variance issues. That's okay. about all I have to say. And you're a resident, right? You're not, I a, am. not a business owner there, but understand you're concerned about the noise. Um, I don't know if anybody had talked to you or not, but I don't have ability to rule on the use today, actually. Car wash versus not. It's more about this distance issue with this width of the landscaping. Uh, but I can certainly appreciate your concern, and I do thank you for coming out today. Thank you. Yes, you're most welcome. I appreciate your time. Uh, next is Sylvia. And then after Sylvia is... Pat, maybe? Crow? Oh, okay, go ahead, Sylvia. I'm sorry. Welcome. Good evening, David Williams and rest of the city staff. This morning you received an opposition to Quick Quack from uh, Sylvia Orioli. I live on 1837 East Harvard Drive. Got That's it. from me and Larry Brash, who's my significant other who is here. We are highly opposed to the variances for this car wash. Mr. and Mrs. Bird has done a great job the last 20 years in serving that, that area. We feel as neighbors that we still have a neighborhood. We still have a neighborhood. We talk to our neighbors. Our neighbors care about what happens around the corner. Having a quick, quick harvest there, I don't understand why they need variances when the land has been perfectly useful for the last 25 years. Some of the issues that I have with it is that it's going to change the whole layout of the area. It will be a higher level building. It will cause visibility problems at McClintock and Baseline. I don't know which way the quick quack is going to face, if it's going to face Baseline or McClintock, but it's something we're going to have to look at every day. Currently, since the city changed the layout of the lanes and added the bike lane, we have more situations where it's a, a problem for walkers, for bikers, and for drivers. People don't know how to use the bike lanes. I almost got in an accident yesterday because somebody was getting into that lane to get to Baseline and McClintock, and I have to turn left onto Harvard, and there was a car coming straight at me. And if there wasn't somebody, if there wasn't somebody on my left side, I would have been in an accident. So as it is, it's a problem. Um, Chapman Chevrolet sometimes uses its center lane and parks their vehicles there to offload, and that causes an issue too. So to have a quick quack with one entrance in kind of barricading that whole center like in a section and not making it a part of the whole system to me is what I am opposed. I'm opposed against this, var this variance, and I'm opposed against quick car, car, whack, car wash and I'm against any car wash at that location. Thank you very much. And just to be clear, you were a neighbor living to the south here on Harvard Drive? We are on Harvard area. Drive. We face uh, the, the um, Pollock lot. Judy, my neighbor, these are all my neighbors that are here. She backs up to the, um, to, to the center right now. So there's a lot of noise with traffic with trash removal, with the dog park, with just general noise. We want to keep our place peaceful. We want our neighbors to keep talking to each other. And for those reasons and for the eyesore that it would bring to this neighborhood, we are opposed to it. And, in, and I know, just in closing, that I've been to some of these meetings. And to me, this is an oxymoron. I've come to these meetings and I've talked about how they want to take the cars off the street. They want to take the cars off the street and they want to add bike lanes. They want to make it multi-use for everybody to use. And yet they're, going to, they're considering 
a quick whack car wash that I believe has four spaces for bicycle parking. They're open seven days a week from seven to nine. And I'm opposed to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I appreciate you coming today. And uh, um, certainly it is an automobile based use that's being proposed. A car wash is pretty much solely for automobiles. Um, uh, for better or worse, this is a permitted use on the property. Um, so we need to live with that at this point. Okay. Um, is it Pat? I apologize uh, if I've got your first name wrong. Crow? Okay. Thank you very much, and I'm glad you're here today. Um, I'm going to take just a few seconds to read her comments and before we move on. Again, thank you very much, Ms. Crow, for being here. Anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number three? Uh, variance requests for a quick whack. Now is the time. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ms. Stovall, um, in terms of uh, the landscape materials in this compre proposed compressed buffer yard, are we getting the same number of trees? Um, the same number of screening devices that we would at its full width is one concern I have in terms of aesthetics and screening and pedestrian safety. So the applicant is required to provide a minimum three foot high um, screen wall along uh, baseline road where both the parking and the maneuvering lane exist. The applicant per code is required to provide um, trees spaced one per 30 feet along Baseline and McClintock, and their plans show that. Um, the applicant, or sorry, our code does not um, require a certain percentage or number of shrubs or ground cover, but um, what we have looked at so far with the landscape plan, we do not have concerns with um, the number of shrubs or ground cover plants provided on the plan. So. Thank you. Um, and the dedication, is that, how long has the city been seeking this bus pull out? Um, transportation made the comment when the applicant submitted for their preliminary site plan review. Um, it was sometime this uh, last spring. That's the first I knew of it. Um, so. Did the applicant find this requirement when they came in to for a pre-application type of conference or at what point did this applicant become aware they had 10 feet less to work with? Yes, when they submitted for their uh, preliminary um, site plan review, transportation made the comment about the right-of-way dedication. And this is probably only slightly related. How long has that property been vacant or um, closed, do you know? Um, I would prefer to defer to the applicant to respond to that. I don't know off the top of my head. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Shuby, why don't you come back up? And this was a gas station convenience store before, right, Ms. Stovall? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for coming back up. Do you know the answer to that question about how long it's been sitting? I do. I did not, but now I do. March 20th. It's been closed. It's when it was fenced in, and that's when the business shut down. Correct. So it's not been that vacant that long. Okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, under state law, under uh, Tempe ordinance, variances are are tough things to get. Uh, they have a pretty rigid set of criteria, and I think some points were made by um, uh, our members from the audience who spoke um, about variances and the criteria about it not being self-imposed, and I think. A lot of times uh, the size of the use um, is more or less a footprint that's standard um, from elsewhere and then imported and it causes a problem um, because of a different footprint. And finding a site that fits is um, always a challenge. Um, I do understand that this is a modification from the original footprint that was submitted uh, to improve the fit to the site. 
Um, I think um, in this case I've heard concern about the use and I'd like to be able to speak to the use and address that as appropriate or not. I fully feel this is a, an important intersection and corner where we have opportunities to do more pedestrian based uses. Uh, I wish I had that purview today because to see a car used right on the corner would not be my top choice, would not be frankly uh, in my top 10 choices, but I cannot rule on that um, unless I want to get appealed for sure. Um, so I'm unable to do that, but I share the concern of the neighbors about that because I think it's important and I think your neighborhood is in a little bit of transition and a time when it can use positive uses that support neighbor, neighbors coming out and neighbors uh, being out on the street and pedestrian and bike uses. Uh, so having said that, I have to look back to the facts, what a variance requires and what is needed to approve it. Um, and I think given two, two factors here, um, that the dedication came at the time of application, it wasn't known and it prohibited application, it became known at that time, and I believe that's a reasonable enough hardship for this case, uh, that they have modified it once to reduce it, uh, so we're talking about eight feet of difference, um, and does that mean, therefore meet the variance criteria? Uh, criteria? You know, no, not in that they reduced it, uh, but I'm uh, inclined to agree with staff that the 10 foot dedication um, causes enough of a hardship to justify a relatively minor variance of eight feet. So, based on that, this request for variance is improved subject to the conditions of approval. There are two of them in the staff report and finding that the criteria for variances are met, uh, including um, that the special circumstances applicable to the property um, are in its reduced size given the additional 10 foot dedication along base, baseline road, um, that the strict application of the code uh, would deprive the use of a modif deprive the user of a modified site plan. They've already made an effort to fit in, and I think that's to be uh, somewhat appreciated. Uh, number three, the adjustment's not a grant of special privilege. Uh, I think had they known or had that been out there for 10 years, we've been trying to get the dedication or the city sought it, um, it would be a different in terms of special privileges uh, where they're basically caught uh, after submittal or upon the time of submittal uh, is my feeling um, and therefore I don't feel it's self-imposed in that regard and that the right-of-way dedication is being imposed by the city of Tempe uh, without any compensation to this property owner. Again, I am sensitive to the neighbors. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this use. Uh, view this as relatively minor modification but I want to encourage neighbors and the public to continue to participate in these type of meetings and when we have hearings uh, to please come back and talk to the city uh, because our ears and our doors definitely open. Uh, again, this request for um, variance is approved subject to the two conditions and I want to thank the applicant for being here today and most of all the neighbors and the property owners for taking the time out of your day to come speak to this case. Thank you very much. Okay, that is our last item on today's agenda. Um, the next meeting of the hearing officer is October 17th. Um, I want to ask staff, Steve, if you've got anything to add before we adjourn this evening. Yes, thank you, hearing officer Williams. Uh, October is National Planning Month. The city of Tempe does participate in that we uh, have a, a few staff members that are going to the conference, the Arizona Planning Conference in at Fort McDowell locally. And uh, it is my understanding that Tempe uh, may have some awards. Very good. That's wonderful to hear. Much well-deserved awards, I'm sure. Thank you for the announcement. Uh, today's meeting of October 3rd is adjourned. Thank you, David.